Welcome to the Adam Does Movies podcast. I'm, of course, Adam, and we have a fun one for you today. Last week, I talked about movie sensitivity. The films people see, they have these deep connections with for some reason, and they get upset if others don't feel the same. Oh, you like Fast and the Furious 10? You loved it? It's your favorite? Well, I didn't like it that much. I thought it was kind of dumb. Well, how dare you? You're a fool. And you should burn for all eternity for not liking that movie. It's an extreme position to take, but it's one that person makes on the internet when they're not feeling good about themselves. And you made them feel worse. It's a sad state of affairs for sure. What's also a sad state of affairs on the other end of the coin is movie criticism and how I don't trust it anymore. And I am one. <clears throat> Certified Rotten Tomatoes movie critic doesn't trust himself at this point. And this all happened... I, I don't know, I feel like it's been seven or so years when things really took a turn. There was a while where you'd go on Rotten Tomatoes, and for me at least, I lined up with the so-called experts 98% of the time to throw out a phony number. But now, it's gone way down. And the reason for that is the same reason everything goes to shit. The perversion of money. That sweet coin you can make by having a polarizing viewpoint. And now, in 2023, social media is all about playing off those odds on different ends of the spectrum. You better love the shit out of something or hate the shit out of something. If you're somewhat in the middle, you are boring and we don't want to hear from you and our algorithm doesn't even know what to do with you. I sadly fall on that more often than not. Occasionally... I'll hit a sweet thing. Avatar 2, for instance, that one got me a whole lot of subscribers and a whole lot of love. But I didn't make 35 more Avatar Sucks videos because that's not genuine to me. Now, if I was one of these grifting types, I absolutely would have made a lot more of those videos and then I would have gone all in on it. Not only does Avatar 2 suck, but this movie sucks, and this one sucks, and everything that's mainstream and popular and by Disney is awful and trash. And next thing you know, I have hundreds of thousands of new followers, and I'm making a lot of money saying the lamest stuff over and over. And there is a cottage industry for those groups of people. And I've talked about them before. It's not worth diving into that. It's boring. It's old hat. And we can go on the other side of things, and we can see it there too. There are lots of channels, lots of TikTok influencers that just love and praise everything that comes out by certain companies or by certain corporations and brands. And they will go head over heels for these new films and maybe, maybe make the most mild of criticisms because they can get away with that and look like they're not completely impartial. Or I'm sorry, completely partial. <laughs> impartial would be what we'd want. That they're not completely perverted by the, the, the beautiful rainbow of pot gold, potted gold on the other side. I got there almost, but I, I tripped over my own stupidity. So yeah, uh, why people don't trust the movie critics? Money's in the game. Money is a big thing. When I look at Rotten Tomatoes and new big movies about to come out, it might be a month away actually, and the early reviews by these critics will hit. I instantly know something is amiss because they all read exactly the same as each other. This is the greatest MCU movie yet. You've never seen anything like this before. So-and-so is at the top of their game. This person is, capital I, capital S, this character. Brie Larson is Captain Marvel. And I'll see that four or five times. Halle Bailey is the Little Mermaid. Okay. Sometimes it's to prove a point because there's a bunch of, you know, racist people on the other side saying, I don't want a black mermaid or, uh, da, 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 or whatever you want to call them. Or, or just people that maybe genuinely want to see an aerial that look closer to the original since the movie is basically a shot for shot live action remake. They want to see the red hair, pale skin version from the cartoon because everything else matches up except for that which is really freaking stupid, but this is the game that's played 
in Hollywood and with Disney and these different companies because they can stir the pot and they can get people talking. And unfortunately, it comes at the expense of some of these actors or actresses that truly are talented. Now, they're caught in the crossfire. And I've learned from the commercial in the 90s, you don't want to get caught in the crossfire. But that was kind of an aside. Let me get back to the focus at hand, which is these critics, I put Eric, I should put bunny quotes around that. They all sound the same. And they all conveniently all come out with these reviews at the same time because they went to the same private screening. Sometimes they're flown out to the event. They're given the red carpet treatment. They get to walk with the stars or interview the celebrities and they, they get the press pass and they get put up in a hotel. This shit actually happens. When people say paid reviews, they don't mean outright paid cash. They mean they're paid in other ways with access. And access is the most important commodity to a movie critic. That's the separator between seeing a movie the day it comes out like I do or two months in advance sometimes, like some of these other channels. Now, I wanna point out, they're not all this way. There are legit movie critics in the space that do get early access, that maybe do think, you know, certain movies are better than I do or worse than I do, and they have a legitimate reason behind them. I'm not talking about them, but it's these other ones that ruin it for the good ones that are in the same space, that say that so-and-so is the best film to date, or you, you know, whatever, whatever it is, the, the criticism is always the same, the praise is always over the moon, you have to see it in theaters day one, or you're gonna miss out on what everyone's talking about. And people are starting to see through it. I brought up Avatar 2, this was a great example. I just refuse to believe that it has I guess I should look, but I'm pretty sure it's in the 80s or 90s as far as the Rotten Tomatoes score goes. That movie was dreadful. It was a remake of the first one, basically, with a dumber plot, nonsensical storyline, character motivations that make no sense, and it goes on for an eternity. And the visuals, while they are, of course, state-of-the-art, I guess they're state-of-the-art from over a decade ago. The first Avatar in the theaters was an experience like no other. The 3D was out of this world. The, the way the trees and the jungle moved around with your eyes was, was mesmerizing. It, it truly was something very special. I didn't get that same feeling from the next movie, which took an eternity to make. Because I thought James Cameron was going to do something completely new again with the space. Maybe there was going to be mist machines. Maybe a Navi was going to you know, be in the audience and punch me in the face and make me feel like I was there. But instead, it was kind of the same thing, but worse, because we didn't have that depth of field. It was all in the ocean. It was underwater, so nothing's really layered like it was in the first film. So I lost some of that magic. And on top of losing that, you have a very lame storyline. So it's got nothing going for it in my book. But the critics, the early reviews were just over the moon for this film. It's so hard to believe. It's so hard to trust that. And I've talked to a bunch of people about this movie, and of course it's anecdotal evidence. It's not like hundreds and hundreds of people, but the ones I talked to, they either hated it, hadn't had any desire to watch it, or thought it was all right. A couple of online friends think it's amazing, so, but, but I don't count them. <laughs> some of them actually are, some of them I actually do respect their opinion on, but they, they wild, they're wildly different than my own, so I don't count theirs. Um, but I think people know what I'm talking about when it's about Rotten Tomatoes. You can just, you can just read through the bullshit now. And their incentive is, is revenue and it is seeing the film early. And that's the access portion is so incredibly, um, important. It's just as valuable, if not more valuable than just getting cold, hard cash because you become a critic that people can rely on to get a movie review out way earlier than the rest. And being first to market is just so damn important when you're on YouTube or TikTok or any of these platforms. You want to be the guy 
that gets the review out right away. You don't want to be me who's scrambling to get to the theaters the day it releases and hopefully get home in time and not be, feel too tired to put out a genuine reaction or a full-blown review on the film. That's tough. And you don't build the support. You don't, get, you don't show up in the algorithm like someone that's had that review out there for a while who gets those early views and those early likes and that early engagement. That person's going through the system while you're just trying to play catch up. So yes, early access is hugely important. Being in the ear of these studios, knowing what's on the surface, knowing what's coming out months ahead of time and being able to make videos on this stuff is hugely profitable. Um, another thing, people don't trust that uh, <clears throat> the, the opinions are so polarizing. I have, yet to, I have yet to see a movie come out where it hasn't been called by someone the greatest thing ever or the worst thing ever. It's so black and white. It's so binary. It's a zero or a one. There's no intricate fours or fives anymore. It's always a zero or a 10. No middle ground anymore. That's not fun. That's not salacious enough. We have to, we have to go crazy with everything. And uh, I brought up those grift channels. I brought up the, the channels that are on the other side where they're like, yeah, I love this movie. You're going to love it too. And if you don't love it, then you're probably a racist or a sexist or a homophobe or something else in between. And that's the other big angle that people take. If you have an opinion that's different than theirs, they will kind of start the spark right away before the movie comes out. I mentioned this with The Little Mermaid. It's no secret that these types of groups are doing this stuff. When the movie's on the horizon, they will already get the seed planted. The racists are going to hate this one. They're not going to like that they character swapped or they race swapped or whatever they did. They use it as a crutch or an excuse to, I guess, throw away a large chunk of criticism people might have. Like me, for instance, I didn't care for The Little Mermaid. I don't like any of the live action Disney remakes. It has nothing to do with the race of a character. If anything, I've actually had this conversation with people I like that Ariel is black and doesn't have red hair. I wish they would have gone further with everything else and made it its own film. Oh, this doesn't need to be Ariel. I know it's hard to believe, but this could be a completely different character, one of Ariel's sisters. She could have her own under the sea adventure set within the Little Mermaid universe. That's a refreshing storyline. What's not fun or exciting to me, I know it is to others, but not to me, it's just reliving the same beat by beat bullshit I already saw back in the 80s and 90s with the original animated films. Lion King was a soulless remake. Aladdin, soulless remake. Lady and the Tramp. I mean, all of them are getting redone. They're going to do Bambi now. They're going to do Lilo and Stitch. They're going to do Moana. Are you kidding me with this? At what end? They're never better. They're almost never better than the original. Maybe one or two cases, but in those cases, it's because they went a different direction. The two that often come up are The Jungle Book, which I agree, and Cinderella, which I disagree. Cinderella's boring. It's, it's completely lifeless to me. But Cinderella was played out a lot different than that original, and Jungle Book was a vastly different film. I'm not talking about Mog Mowgli or whatever that was called. That was a different one that came out, I think, the same year by Andy Serkis. Bizarre. Bizarre that they had two versions of The Jungle Book made in live action in the same year or so. These movies just play off a nostalgia bait. And they have nothing new or interesting to say. And it's boring. So when they give the race bait stuff out there and say, Oh, people are going to hate this. They made uh, this character black or this character gay or this person trans or this person whatever. All you're doing is, is feeding a very small portion of sharks out there that really do get triggered by this. And you're just insulting everyone else who doesn't give a shit about any of this. I absolutely despise this whole section of the internet in the movie space. 
calling people names based on race or gender or whatnot, or on the other side, saying someone's racist or homophobic or whatever. That stuff is so bad. And oftentimes, it's not even the case. They're just, again, taking the extreme position to be noticed. And it's embarrassing and, and sadly pathetic, and I don't want any part of this crap, but unfortunately, I see it all the time because it comes to the surface. It rises to the top because that's what the algorithm pushes out. Again, it likes the extreme sides of things. Now, the best advice I can give for trying to find people that are honest is to just really check out their channels, check out their social media sites, and see what they are all about. Are they a person that presents themselves as an honest individual? Have you watched some of their content? Have you listened to some of their stuff? Look at their fan base. Do they seem toxic? Do they seem to be hating on one group of people or one company over another? Or are they pretty well-adjusted, well-rounded people? That's what I try to be. But of course, I, you know, I'm going to say that like every other critic is going to say it. And you have to just put in a little bit of work, unfortunately, to weed out some of the bullshit. And there is a lot of it out there because, again, everyone in this space is clawing and fighting for not only attention, but for those sponsors, for those brand deals to get themselves to the next level, to get themselves noticed. It's, a, it's an ugly system, but it's one that runs rampant through all of the internet. It's not just secluded to movie reviews. Game spaces like that, streamings like that, it's all the same. And we just have to be wary of it and know it exists and know that there's ways to avoid it. Uh, the last thing I would say is, <laughs> there is there are reasons why I don't get early access screeners. And it's because... I'm not going to be paid off that way. Someone someone asked a while back in a video, like, Adam, what if Disney offered you a million dollars? Would you give them glowing reviews? Absolutely, I would give them glowing reviews. There is a price to everyone. And if they said, here's a million dollars, give these movies a great review, sure. And then I take that money and I turn around and I start making my own movies with them. Or I, I start my own, you know, newer channel with it where I can make skits and I can express myself in different ways. These are hypothetical situations that are not grounded in any sort of reality. Because by the time a studio would ever offer you such an extravagant package of money, you will have hit a point in your viewer count, in your subscription count, where you don't need it. If Disney or someone came and said, Adam, you want half a million dollars to review this, I can guarantee you I'm already making half a million dollars or a million dollars per year because I have pulled in a massive audience. It's the only way you would get the attention of people like that. Now, if these same companies said, Adam, would you take a few hundred dollars? I would say no, and I have said no. In fact, there was a company that was going to start offering me screeners of films ahead of time, and I reviewed one years back, and I shat all over it. It was an indie -er movie. It starred Kirsten Dunst, and I can't remember who else. It, it didn't even go to theaters. But that was the end of that conversation, straight up. So these things happen. These, these things do take place. But it, it's good to be honest. And the other thing is, if I was given a ton of money to review something and, and praise it, there's ways to tell the audience. <laughs> And again, I'm speaking in a crazy hypothetical that would never happen, but I just want to be honest. And that's, there's a price to everyone out there. That's the bottom line. And some people are a cheap date. Some people, it's not going to take much for them to amass a little bit of supporters. And then they catch the ear, they catch the eyes of a certain group that has their own kind of concept of how they want to use that person. And then the doors open and they step inside. So yeah, things to look for, things that you should definitely be wary of, wary of, weary of, whatever. It's all the same to me. It's all They're all just words that we made up at some point and, and deemed them real. All right. Well, this was real. This was real fun. This is another podcast in the trenches. Let me know your thoughts if you're on YouTube, what you think of this discussion. Are, have you noticed it lately? The trust starting to erode from people, maybe at one point that you actually respected and watched. And over the years, you're like, what happened to this dude? 
Why is he so salty on everything? Or why did he suddenly do a, a 180 and now he loves all the movies by such a such director or he's in this group now and he's only interested in this type of movie made by this type of person. There's a lot of that stuff going around. It's very easy to fall into those pitfalls too and to start to think and talk like that individual because you're in that space and it's being fed to you constantly. That propaganda is just being fed right into your channels, into your feed. So yeah, if you're on YouTube and you see this video, let me know in the comments where you're at with this whole thing. Please like the video there as well and subscribe to my channel, Adam Does Movies, where I post tons of movie content each and every week, including the podcast that goes out every Monday night there. If you're listening on Spotify or on Apple Music, Apple Podcasts, it goes out 9 a.m. every Monday. I can tell this is winding down because my words are starting to feel foreign to me. <laughs> it's starting to slur. I'm getting tired. Okay, well, that's it. Thanks for listening. Thanks for watching. And I'll see you next Monday.